Hey guys, this is Matt Miles, Deshay County, McGee, Arkansas. Today's Tuesday, the 6th, April 6th, and we have the Podfather team here today. Of course, everybody knows Lane, and we got Dawson with us today. This is my oldest grandson, and he's really took a liking to this farming. This is kind of a special area. I'm glad we're here today. Where this planter's running over here in the background is the first piece of property that I ever had the opportunity to buy. It's uh, called the Cox Place, it's 75 acres. And we bought that in 99. Uh, didn't have the money to do it, but went to the bank, borrowed 100% of what it cost to buy the land and uh, been blessed, you know, since then. Today we're gonna look at some beans we have up. Dawson and I are going to run the planter a little bit, and it's going to be a big day. Dawson, you want to add anything? You going to plant beans? You going to dig some up and see how deep you plant them? Yes. Absolutely. I've got a gut feeling this is going to be a good year. The farmer is the eternal optimist. We farm together as a family. If we all put our heads together, I don't know what we couldn't achieve. Hopefully we hit 90 bushel. I think we could do it. Just have healthy plants and a good return on investment. One of the worst things about farming is making a decision on planting depth. A quarter of an inch on your depth sometimes, you won't get a stain. As you can see, my pinky ring's empty, so obviously I didn't win. <laughs> With this class of guys that's in Podfathers, I mean, anyone could win. You wanna drive a little bit? What we're running here with a twin row, you're splitting that seed on both sides of the row. You know, there's a lot more pressure on the seed because there's less seeds in a row. Beans are one of the, they don't react to some things like corn does or even cotton. Not a lot of magic potions for soybeans. Weather, drainage, and fertility are the, are the three main factors in my opinion, and variety selection. The high yield part of this field is over on the other side, but I'm trying to find out what's feasible to put into normal production. <clears throat> so we're not out there spending thousands of dollars an acre on the soybeans to try to increase the yield, because what good does that do me in the, in the end? Ten years ago, I did all my spraying, a lot of my planting, fertility, and and the bigger we get, the less that happens. You know, I got four of these guys, so before too long, hopefully they'll be running some of this stuff. I say this all the time, but when you work with people you love, how does it even work? They seem deep. But they're a joint. That's what they are, is a joint. Well, I ain't found the first seed. Me neither. You gotta look in the row, Dawson. Look, let me show you. Seed. One of the worst things about farming is making a decision on planting depth. If you're off a quarter of an inch on your depth sometimes, you won't get a stand. You just gotta trust in God and, and make the best decision you can. And if it works, it works. And if it don't, then you don't get mad and throw your hands up. You just go back and redo it. These beans were planted March the 16th. They went through a frost last Thursday. I came looked at these Wednesday night. The unifoliant was not unwrapped yet, so I think we really dodged a bullet. Yeah, you can dig one up, be careful. So we got a pretty good root system started on them. We got our unifoliant out now. I think we counted this field last week at like 120,000, so we're doing pretty good on population. These are uh, Agrigold 4620s. It's a new bean. This is the first year we planted it. To be planted this early in the weather we've had, this is the best start that I've had on, on my regular beans. If we got the even emergence and we've got, you know, a decent population, then we're ready to rock and roll. What's your favorite crop? My favorite crop would be corn. I figured corn would be your favorite crop. Corn's good to eat, isn't it? Okay, this is a Vardaman place. On a 38-inch row, one of our limiting factors is, is our spacing. 
you know, for yield. So we got 20 row planters to plant beans with, picking up some yield there from one to 10 bushels acre. So we got to thinking, well, we can do that on beans, can we not do it on corn? So see, these plants are, are nine inches apart. We've seen from minimum of 10 up to 25 bushel increase with the twin row versus a single row. I think we're gonna be okay. We're enjoying trying new things on the corn as well as we are the soybeans. I'm not gonna say we're ever gonna set the world on fire, but we did get a 300 uh, entry in the NCGA last year, and that was our first goal. Now we're gonna try for more. So basically what's going on right now, we're, we're finishing up, you know, what the farm we call the McLennan Place and getting ready to move to our farm up in Tiller. Uh, along this wall, we keep Foliar K, which is a, a potassium acetate product. And then we've got a product in here that's Total 10 that we help them develop, which is a um, nitrogen and potash with a little bit of boron. They will custom tailor products to your needs. Right here. We keep their uh, Sweet Success product, which is their sugar product. Oh, here's one of their flagship products here. This is their cow bore product. It's their calcium boron premix. Uh, Ghost Foliar's got their Transmax technology in it. They do have a great line of products here. All right, guys, so we've got some rice ground dry enough, so we're gonna run double shift tonight, plant 24 hours with a drill. Wish y'all were here tonight to look at that, but I think the Podfather team has gotta get on to their next stop. So we have really enjoyed the Podfather team here. It's educational for us and educational for them too, I hope. So we're fixing to send them on north. I think we're going to Corey. So Corey, you got them next, buddy. Today we're installing some ADS pipe. This spot here we've never worked before. Mother Nature will get you every time, but I think it'll give you a little bit more peace of mind. Maximize every input, maximize every acre. We're doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in-furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. This field here was did really well. It was the early variety of corn. Why well, we pretty much rotate 50-50 every year. So what was in corn last year goes to beans this year. So fortunately, we're able to be able to hold on to the ground that we do farm. So we've been farming this ground for well for ever since I've been here. So we got great relationship with our landlords and the owners. Uh, I'd say within the last four years, this is like the best condition we've ever planted in. Ground's dry. All the wet spots are dried up. Everything's going really good. Just if Mother Nature would cooperate at night and knock it down in the 30s, it'd be a lot more, a lot more productive for us. Yeah, you can't win with her. You just got to deal with her. So with the cold weather that's coming in, we're supposed to get down to 29 degrees, one to three inches of snow in two nights. We know with the weather that's coming in, we have to be careful to get this still to germinate. One thing we're doing is we're going a lot deeper than what we used to. So when we come out here and check, I'm right at that inch and, and three quarter mark. That's right where I want to be between inch and three quarter and, and two inches. Now normally I would not plant my beans that deep, but like I said, with the, with the coming in weather, trying to protect them. So as long as we don't get a hard pounding rain, we should be okay. They should be able to make it. We're on 20 inch rows and that population there is about 115,000. The soil is the best that we've had in a long, long time. The ground's real nice and dry. Planting conditions are perfect. Kind of hard not to go. And you know the temperatures say we're more indicative of late February, early March. We gotta go, so that's why we're trying to control what we can. And by burying the beans deeper, that's, that, that, that's our way to control that. 
is with the 20 inch rows, the corn residue that's left from, from the year before, that's something that we're constantly trying to fight. So we're trying to break it up as, as small as we can to get through it, to be able to, for the beans to emerge so the trash doesn't get caught up in it. You know, the prime example is right here. You have two root balls from the year before, and there's a bean laying on top of the ground. So as the closing wheels comes around, it grabs these roots, and it's just gonna flick it right up with it. So one thing that we gotta make sure of, we keep our closing wheels free of these, and we try to do the best we can to break these and move these out. But you can see here how small we want all the residue, as small as we can, so they can start breaking down. That's what we like to see. And it's one thing to raise 300 bushel corn, it's another thing to get rid of 300 bushel corn for the falling crop. So with the population cut, that's one thing that we try to do. We want to use that money to go back toward the seed, seed treatment. Because we're saving money with, with the seed, we're not putting out that much. So now that we have less beans coming out, every bean matters. And going with that, you know, bean lives matters. You got to get them in the ground and get them up, 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 up and out of the ground. Here at Advanced Shield, we're not only just a consulting company, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. No middleman, for the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. we're doing? Well, what do we do best with planting soybeans? Today is the uh, 22nd of April 2021 and we've set record lows for the last two days in Arkansas but we're still planting and I'm ignoring it. Today we're planting soybeans and this is on an old cornfield. Of course in the south we majority of us plant on raised beds so we had to uh, knock them down yesterday and gave us a pretty decent seed bed. It's probably inconsistent in moisture, but I think we have a 90 to 100% chance of rain tomorrow night. So those that aren't in the moisture or maybe in some uh, corn residue will certainly get enough moisture tomorrow. So sometimes I fail to mention what makes this happen. And it's not me, it's not just me. I tend to get more credit than I deserve. I mean, I, I've got a whole team of people Misty Courier, she keeps everything going as smoothly as possible on her desk. She's got a, a nameplate that says Chaos Coordinator, and there's a lot of truth to that. And, and then on the farm, you know, I think we've talked about the fact that we depend heavily on the uh, H2A labor, but, but they're just like family to me. I mean, these guys have been coming for years. Uh, of course, the backbone of this whole operation is Roger Wedgworth and Donnie Brown. I, there's, I can't even put it in words how fortunate I am to uh, have them. And I sincerely mean that because they sure will do anything for me and, and I hope they know that I'll do anything for them. Me getting all the credit is not justified. I need to be selling today since the market's limit up. I mean, it just keeps, continues to go up. Uh, right now, I'm actually in pretty good shape. I'm about 25, 30% sold on soybeans at uh, 1266, and currently the market is 1350, 1375. Uh, it's hard not to be profitable at these price levels. Corn, also a big number, 550, 575, just at harvest. Normally we hold corn all year. Uh, at these price levels, it probably needs to go right out the door. I think we've got 180 units of seed. That'll finish that field. And uh, of course it came in bulk bags, so we put the bulk bags in the bins. 
which then goes through the seed treater. Uh, it's a US seed treater. And uh, in that process, we're putting on three fungicides and one insecticide. Looking good, looking good, yeah. Not too sticky. We've had problems with it being sticky the last few days, but uh, this should be doing well. Coming through. Welcome to Gregory, Nate. Uh, but we've been looking forward to these kind of days. It's April 22nd and we're planting beans almost wide open. We're finishing some corn and uh, I don't know, we've got 1,000 acres plus of soybeans planted. So I'm actually gonna get in the truck and Nate, do you mind helping me back up to the uh, hoppers glad. on the planter? And uh, we'll try to get some seed in this thing and uh, so he can get on his way. Sounds good. So far today, just simply, it's been a quiet day in the office. Been paying bills, just holding down the fort. So there have been good days, there have been bad days. Of course, Mother Nature's thrown us a few curveballs this year. We've had some rain and freezing temperatures. So we've had to kind of step on the accelerator some to get it in. Do you think Perry's gonna win this year? I'm still waiting to see if Perry won last year because Perry won't tell me anything, so. I'm optimistic that he can pull it out. If anybody can, he can do it. I have faith in him. Yeah, corn hit $7, new crop, I'll, cut, I'll get a haircut. It's been over a year, well over a year now. And uh, I'm, of all the pod fathers, I think I've got more hair than all of them put together. That's what started. I, I couldn't get a haircut and I said, well, I'll just go without a haircut and then, you know, Got a few comments and a few compliments. I said, well, I'll just let it grow, so. So Steven and I were friends. I first time I met him was probably 2011. I had a lot of good memories. And then uh, he told me he was gonna have a procedure done. Ultimately, it just didn't work out, did not work out. Uh, Steve, Steven's, he was just attentive to detail. He, you know, grasped the concept of that even emergence. I would say way before anyone else did. When four, four and a half miles an hour is fast to get that accurate planting, he was planting it two to two and a half. He did a lot of it himself, he and Cheryl. He was well respected, a legend, if you will, in the industry. I think we got a good look at everything. We talked about some fertility strategies. We looked at, uh, talked about some humic acids. Uh, in our burn down programs as well as the two by two. Uh, we're big fans of the Monty's uh, liquid carbon or their calcium plus is actually what I use. Been with them forever, probably closing in on 12 years. Uh, real proud of that super people at Monty's. And uh, I guess we went up to the seed store and we uh, treated some seed. Got rain coming so we're not planting seed too deep. Uh, it's got adequate moisture but it is the 22nd of April I think so we're not a in a panic about drying out this early in the year. I've got a gut feeling this is gonna be a good year. The farmer is the eternal optimist. Those guys from the East Coast, they don't know what's in store for them. It may take Matt Miles and I both to get there, but we're about to show them how it's done. We got some Monty's product. We use it in a lot of other crops. It's a changer. We focus on things that complement soil biology, things that complement soil health. It just keeps giving back. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. Things are looking really, really good. 
all the beans we planted in the ground last week, they're getting ready to pop through. So I'd say with the rain coming Wednesday by Thursday morning, we should have beans everywhere. So I'm pretty excited. We're on plane A for once. And it's almost May and we're still on plane A. So it kind of has me concerned with what's coming around the corner when we flip to May. Hell, we might be doing this all a second time. I don't know. But for right now, it's looking pretty good. So Advanced Shield would be my crop consulting co company. Uh, we pride ourselves in do doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one consulting with the farmer. Uh, we work with what you have. We're not gonna rewrite the book. If we can find a better, smarter way to do it, then that's what we're gonna do. Starting this year, we also started our own select crop inputs with chemicals. We're trying to deliver you know, a good product at a really great price to you. On the seed treatment side, we got the Groundwork BioAg Rutella X. It's a good product. Yeah, we've been using it for about four years now. The thing I like about the mycorrhiza, especially for us, is we're heavy conventional till. So whenever you're conventional till, your mycorrhiza spore counts are gonna be down lower. So anytime we can keep adding more and more to the soil, that's always a bonus. It's added protection, so if we have a good year, you know, we have more spores out there. It's going to be able to find more, more food, right. more, more root, root hairs. It's just a, it's a compound factor. I do think from all the snow, I think all the beans, you know, that people had, most of them should, should survive. Corn should be okay. Probably got dinged a little bit. It's not an ideal situation, but you know that's real world farming. Nothing's perfect. There's not a perfect scenario. You got to go when you can go, and you got to adapt and change. The thing that we do have is a lot of fulvic acid, a lot of biologicals, a lot of azos. We got mycorrhiza, so we love live bacteria. I mean, that's what we're going with. I'm using water. I'm being patient. Let my ground temps warm up use the nutrients out of there. I know last year you guys heard a lot of negativity, but I mean, we was going through heck and back, you know, from plant season on. Uh, Mother Nature threw us a lot of different curveballs. So right now I'm pretty excited, I'm pretty amped just to have, you know, somewhat a normal year. I think all the farmers around America are too. why the grain market's been up so much the past week is because last week I sold a good chunk of it. Anything over five bucks, it's been a while since I've been able to sell corn over five bucks, beans over 13. I pulled the trigger because uh, there's been too many years I've been selling corn 350 or less and beans nine dollars and less. So what's the saying? A bird in the hand's better than two in the bush. So I, I guess I took the sure profit as long as Mother Nature can, can produce some yields. I'm tired of giving away our crop. That's what I feel like I've been doing for the past few years. It just stinks to work this hard to raise this crop but then sell it for so little. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty positive about everything right now, <laughs> to be honest with you. The conditions, planting's going smooth, the markets are back. Yay, buddy, it's fun to be a farmer again. Running the strip till machine, soil warrior. Alexander, he got his first farm. Of course, we're having problems. It's got to be on film day, doesn't it? I mean, come on. 